Guess what? I am in love with this chef of a good histogram. And the sign of a good chef is one that understands the ingredients, understands where they come from, what they should taste, taste like, and then how do they blend together. So it's in the understanding of the ingredients that that really makes a good chef. And so with a histogram, you really need to understand your picture and what are the contents of your picture. You can't look at a histogram out of context. It is so important to analyze the picture and what it represents, and then you'll be able to read the histogram. I feel like the histogram is misunderstood, and I have to admit, I'm in love with it. So let's take a look at the histogram in Camera Raw because that's what we're going to be using. In Photoshop, there also is a histogram palette, but um, I find that the Camera Raw palette for the histogram is actually quite superior. It shows the RGB, red, green, blue, and the cyan, magenta, yellow, CMYK of the picture separately. And when there's equal levels, of all three, it'll be represented in white, which you see here. So let's take a look at the actual palette. Goodbye, my dear chef. Okay, we're now in Camera Raw, and up at the top right corner, you'll see the histogram palette, which is always displayed. And what this palette is representing is on the left are all of the black pixels in your picture and on the right are all the pure white pixels in your picture and then everything in between. The higher the graph goes, the more pixels there are in that area. And so once you can decipher what is being represented here, it starts to make sense. Um, this spike right over here is actually your shadow area and we have what is called clipping in the shadow area and that means when the pixels that there are so many pixels that it reaches 255 and that means it's clipping or spiking and that means that in that shadow area and we've talked about this in class there will be no texture or detail in the shadow area once you get clipping now for the most part, that sounds like that's a bad thing. But in the case of this picture, if we look closely, um, our clipping is gonna take place somewhere in the dark parts of these chains. And actually, that should be a deep shadow. And so to have clipping in that area, I think is not necessarily a very bad thing. On the other hand, when we look at the right side of our chart, which is our highlight area, if you look to the far right, there's no pixels in what should be the highlight or the brightest white. Now, I don't suggest that we have clipping there. Otherwise, what we would get is blown out white. And that means no texture, no detail in the white area. If you look at the picture in the white area, we have some pretty nice detail. But if you analyze it, it actually is a little bit dark. It's going a little bit gray. And thus, um, that's why our pixels here are sort of inching, they're shying away from the white highlight side of our histogram. So what I want to show you, keep your eye on the histogram over here, and I'm going to take our exposure slider down here, move it to the right, and lighten up this picture. In general, I feel like this picture should be just a little bit lighter. But keep your eye on the histogram up there. And I'm going to inch those pixels. And as I inch them, what that's doing is bringing the edge of those pixels to brightest white. Now, if I go too far, let's just do it for the fun of it. Because this is so fun. Um, I'm going to spike it up so I get clippy on purpose. And you can see that um, I've lost all detail. Hopefully you can see this. Lost all detail in my white areas. You can see that these have shot up through the ceiling here, and um, that is what's called clipping, is I'm losing detail. Now what's interesting is a lot of people turn this on by accident, but if you click on this arrow, it actually gives you a warning. And see that red that just appeared? A lot of people turn that on by accident, they're like, what's going on here? So this is a warning that, your, um, that all your highlight areas are not going to print 
texture or detail. And if I made this picture too dark, let's go for it. Let's go way dark with this. Um, I'm going to create some clipping here. So see how all my pixels are slamming up against the left, which is my shadow area. If I turn on my clipping warning, whoops, I guess they're not quite enough. Let's go further. Wow, we really have to push that. What we have to do is get it to the point where uh, there's no detail whatsoever in the shadow area. And hopefully you can see there's these little bits of blue that are representing that. So red for clipping in highlight areas and blue for clipping in shadow areas. So I'm going to adjust this so that my histogram I don't want to go to blown out white here. So I'm just getting it so I am just below bright white. And I'll do a before and after by clicking the preview. Before, after. And so I brought that pole out of being gray into more of a white painted zone. And I might even bring in a little bit of black here. Now you can see I have a little bit of... um. It's showing clipping in the shadows of this chain. And I can turn that off if I want to. So that's an adjustment of that picture. And let's look at a couple other ones. Um, oh, here's, here's one that was completely overexposed. And so if you take a look at my histogram up here, you can see I have clipping in the white areas. I have no shadow or black in this picture. And my midtones right here in the middle actually are barely represented. So I've got a, all my pixels are literally smashed up against the highlights. It's very graphic actually. You can really understand your picture. And when I look at this picture, I, I'm not in the snow and I'm not, you know, in, um, it's not a picture of a wedding dress. It's a pole where I don't think I should have all those pixels slam that direction. So let me bring my exposure to the left here. And this wouldn't be a picture I would use because it's completely overexposed. But I think this gives a good illustration of how, <coughs> excuse me, um, how you could bring those pixels back into range and how drastically it's changing our histogram. Okay, I had to sip some, some water. I got so excited about that histogram. So let me see. Um, Here's another, this is kind of an interesting one up here. Um, if you look at this picture, I most definitely have clipping. See this happening? But it's not in my darkest area. So in other words, it's not in my shadow area. I'm getting clipping in the lower midtones, And it's not the full spectrum of light. As you can see, it's in red, green, and blue. And so I have some extreme color in that area, but if I had the total white, that means all colors, then it would be representing um, loss of texture. But in this case, I'm not losing any texture. I don't have a big spike in the shadow area. In fact, if I darken the blacks in this picture, now you can see I have a spike clipped all the way to the left. And hopefully you can see that I've lost a lot of detail in the pavement here. So I'll bring it back into range. Oh, it was actually the black. There we go. And you can see how I've picked up a lot of detail now in the pavement. Let's see. There's. Oh, this is kind of interesting. Okay. Take a look at this histogram. This is a weird one. This is like a nub. I don't know what this thing is. It's got a big spike here. So what do you think that means? I'll give you a second while I take a drink of water. That is representing, this is like a mail slot. Um, I don't even know if anybody gets mail there, but this is a mail slot. And so we've got a big spike here for this black area. And then we got this like really blah little mound here. And so what that's telling me, now a lot of people think there's really good looking histograms and really ugly histograms, and this might be defined as a not so pretty histogram. 
um, what we're looking for is usually a good spread of pixels from black to white because really that spread of tonality is what makes a good photograph. But in this case, it's gray and black. You know, it's a pretty monochromatic looking picture. And so let's say I want to just give it a little bit more contrast because usually when you have a histogram where you've got all your pixels piled up in the middle, that literally represents a pile of midtones. You thought I was going to say something else, huh? Um, so no strong black, no strong white. So if you think about it, usually that represents low contrast when you have just a conglomeration of midtones without any highs and lows. So in this case, if I brighten up my picture a little bit, watch my histogram move. This gives me a better looking image in terms of what I saw when I shot it, which is kind of like a gunmetal gray um, garage door with a mail, mail slot in it. Might even go just a pinch lighter. And then I might bring in some contrast. So I'll bring in some black down here. And you could see my pixels inching toward the left. If I went really far with, if I wanted to get my um, pixels all the way over to highlights, you can see how that lightens the picture too much. So this is what I'm talking about is if you just take the histogram out of context and say, okay, I need white pixels, black pixels, and everything in between, then you're going to make a mistake on your histogram. In the case of this picture, I don't really have any bright highlights. This is a gray surface with an opening that's black. So it would make sense that those pixels don't reach all the way over here to the right hand side. And then I need to actually go for more midtones, but brighter than what we had. We had this. So I'm going for a brighter inching toward the highlights. And I'm literally pushing all those pixels toward white. And this is representing the amount of pixels up at the top here. And then I brought in the black just to give it a little bit more contrast. So now I have a more well-rounded um, histogram. It's not extreme dark to white because I'm because I'm got a sort of mid-tone kind of picture, but it certainly doesn't give us just this really like condensed histogram. And let's see, let's take a look at one more picture. Like this one would have like a really, yeah, check that out. This has a really centralized histogram. And in the case of this, it's all gray. I might lighten it just a pinch and that's about it. But there's not a lot of, there's no highlights here. So you don't want to falsely create highlights if the picture doesn't contain them. Uh... Let's see. This is a good representation in terms of a kind of flat picture. Um, I don't know why they're chaining up this. Are Winnebago's a hot commodity? This is like, do not touch this Winnebago. So um, what I want to show you is that right now the picture looks just a little bit flat. So what I'm going to do is bump up my exposure and take a look at the histogram everything's kind of pushed into the middle and I actually have a little clipping here in the red and green and I don't have too much in the white area and pretty much nothing in a strong black so this this piece of barbed wire is probably represented as soon as these pixels start to pick up here so if I lighten up my picture see how my pixels if I go too far I start to get Clipping, there you go, no detail in my highlights. So I'm going to bring it back so I don't get that far right clipping. And actually, I want to be able to read the text. So I'm going to go about right there. And then I'm going to bring some black in because if you look here, it's really weak in the shadow area. So now I'm going to bring in some black. And you see how I've kind of stretched out that histogram into something that that guarantees that I'm getting kind of a highlight shadow and some good midtones. And if I hit the preview, watch my histogram before, after, before, after. 
and see how the picture changes. Maybe I'll darken it just a little more. There we go. So you can really kind of understand how it's representing the picture if you look at the two together. And in Camera Raw, that histogram is always present and most people ignore it. And it's super useful in terms of really understanding that, that texture and tonality of your picture. So that's it. The histogram is something that if you use it right, it's like winning the lottery. And if you understand what's going on, then um, you might not get so concerned if, if you have an area where the histogram is extreme and it's dark and you've got clipping or if it's really bright and you've got clipping. If you understand the context of the image, then it's still a good histogram. It's a winner. Hey, Chef Histogram, I'm here at the Hammered Liquor Store and there's a man, he's about to walk into a histogram and I'm afraid because he's wearing a black suit that he's gonna get clipped. Well ma'am, you have to understand that if he's wearing a black suit then there are certain parts of the suit that might have texture like on his leg where the sun might be hidden it but for the most part if he's in shadow and he's wearing a dark suit, then it's perfectly all right if there's some clipping that happens to him. So let him walk right into that histogram and get clipped. Okay, chef. I believe you. Thank you.